Oklahoma State's going to take a step back. I'm sorry. I'm a huge Oklahoma State fan, and I I would do anything to go to a game there at night. They get rowdy. I'll go so, if I get to whack one of them paddles against the board. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? Oh, God, yeah, absolutely. So, it's like caveman style, just beat boom, things boom. and stuff like that. They get fired get up down there. Get a in the head and drag her by the hair or something, caveman style. But, I'm getting way off topic. Hold on. This is another. <laughs> this is a whole different podcast. I'm I was thinking into. about whacking one of them cheerleaders, man. Yeah, like, come here, right. darling. I'm kidding. So. Hello, welcome to Randy Jack Sport. My name is Randy Meadows. This I'm Jackie Haswell, and me and Randy make up a team at RandJackSports.com where we offer expert handicapping advice on select college and NFL football. And we put together a podcast for you guys, and we're going to talk about random football topics on a weekly basis. And uh, what else, Randy? Well, um. In conjunction with this this podcast, we have uh, we have a, a number of things going on on our website, and our website's growing um, as we speak. Again, that's www.ranjacksports.com. Um, you can see it at the bottom of the telecast here. Is we have a uh, we have a number for you to call uh, if you want to leave uh, any information, any topics that you want to want us to uh, address, mention, uh, or just give an opinion because we're all about freedom of speech around here. So, um, we also want to give a big thanks to Anero Media for, uh, helping us, uh, produce this and get it out to you people. And, uh, if we can do anything for you, please visit our website and, uh, give us a call. Uh, Randy, don't forget to mention that not only can they call, but they can get on to our website and log on to our Facebook and Twitter accounts and leave feedback or, uh, comments on anything they want so certainly go to uh facebook uh search ranjack sports um or our twitter handle is at ranjack sports um obviously we're going to be on the narrow media's youtube channel you can see us there um and, and we have a lot of of good things coming like i said our website is uh in the fledgling stages right now and it's going to grow and get get larger with your increased traffic and help so we appreciate that so um enough with the marketing enough with the uh yeah, the pleasantries get, let's get down to what we do we're man. here let's we're going to talk some football. football it's football season That's we're going right. to talk football That's and right. um uh we're going to start it off talking about the college football and the ap poll we uh <laughs> we we see usc sitting at the top and it's kind of hard for us to yeah sit here. i saw they came out yesterday the ap poll came out and had usc ranked number one and i just it caught me off guard a little bit I just think that uh, you know nothing against USC, but you know they've they've been on probation and they've had their problems the last couple of years and and everybody's all hyped up on them right now and I think it's real disrespectful to some of the other teams out there like LSU and Alabama and uh, you know they're just going ahead and, and shooing USC in and they they still got to play a football season and they're not a shoe in for anything and I'm not saying they're overrated or. Uh, they don't have a chance to win the national championship, but I don't think they're worthy of the number one ranking. I think that's uh, I think that's just really disrespectful to a lot of other people in the in the college football. So what well, do you think, Randy? Well, let's look at USC. They've got Matt Barkley, um, Heisman candidate. Um, as a matter of fact, everybody's giving him the the Heisman right now. Um, is that fair? Probably not, but yeah. is it, it's probably true. I mean, let's yeah, be he's, honest. He's probably the best quarterback. He's probably in, the best out there, and, and you can't deny him that. I mean, it's yeah. his until somebody takes it away from him. Yeah. Is what I think. Yeah, so, and he's got the best set of wide receivers to throw the ball to in college football. And uh, USC's. I mean, I, everything looks good on paper, man. They they got the the hot shot coach Lane Lane Kiffin. So. Uh, and, and his dad is defensive coordinator, you know, uh, Monty Kiffin, couple, he's won a couple Super Bowls. I mean, USC, USC's got everything they need to win a national championship. There's no doubt about it. Well, I mean, look at you got warm California sun, good looking women. <laughs> maybe that'll be more of a distraction to California women. So maybe fancy Matt Barkley. Cars, <laughs> fancy cars, celebrities. I mean, who wouldn't want to go to? I want to go to USC right now. I'm ready. Yeah. Load, load me up. I'm ready to go. So, um, yeah, no but, doubt. I mean, you know, who doesn't want to go there? Recruiting is phenomenal down there, and they do a good job. You know, Kiffin has his problems, but oh, I Kiffin know. What does about, a great job. What about the quarterback a few years ago from USC that didn't even start a 
game his entire career at USC and got drafted, and now he's a starting quarterback in the NFL. I think yeah. Matt Castle, the, the quarterback for Kansas City, he mm. never started a game at USC, and he was the backup. That's and, right. and, and the talent, I mean, there's just so many five-star chip, uh, blue-chip players that never even play that that just for a chance because if you are a starter at USC you are guaranteed to get drafted into the NFL it's pretty plain and simple the talent that they have is unreal so if you're one of the 22 starters you're almost guaranteed to be drafted into the NFL so make no doubt about it they have the talent and you know they they they've been on probation for the last couple of years and they're they're off and they're chomping at the bit they're ready to they're ready to put their flag in the ground and say we're back so that's right and uh, i'm not sure what their their schedule is i know they got a couple tough non-conference games i know they play notre dame every year and i don't know if that game is in south bend this year or not but you know notre dame is uh you know is notre dame is not the team it used to be but uh certainly and oregon you know Oregon's going to be tough this year, but they're replacing a quarterback, and they lost to Michael James. And right. uh, you know the Pac-10 is, you know, I mean, well, it ain't the SEC, so. Well, you know, that's right. What is though? What is? Um, you can go on to our website www.ranjacksports.com and look at our NCAA preview we have posted on there. Um, at the bottom, uh, I have USC winning the whole thing. Um, and then now, now everybody's pointing fingers like, Randy, you just said USC is over at da, da, da. You know, USC, by the end of the year, should be the number one team in the country. Now, right now, I can't I can't sit here and say they are. That's disrespectful to Alabama, LSU. I mean, it's their title for someone to come take. Why does USC, wh- what's going on with them? Why do they get pulled out? It's media darlings. They're media darlings. People love talking about oh, them. Oh, that's right. And and we opened our Hollywood, very first show. in California and just everybody's just We opened over. our very first show doing what these these guys have made a living doing and that's blowing up usc and making them great and you know so we're guilty so i tell you what let's not talk about it anymore we're done with usc i'm done with usc all right until I'm, they until they beat oregon or notre dame on the road and they man up and beat somebody then i'm done with them certainly so i agree so we're not talking about usc anymore <laughs> until at least next week or unless something comes across the wire that somebody raped somebody which is not too far-fetched but anyway so we're going to move on down the uh, ap poll and look at number two alabama um like i said man they're number one they're number one for a reason and you don't um, even want to get me started about alabama because i have a pretty big distaste in my mouth about how the national championship played out last year i really thought the national championship should have been a split national championship uh but that's not what the bcs is set up for yeah well that's true too it's set up for for a team to have a be a definitive national champion but you know lsu had their lsu beat five or six teams that were ranked in the top seven or eight last year went on the road and beat two of them teams uh, then they beat Alabama in Alabama, and then they play them again and lose in a national championship. And to say Alabama was definitively better than LSU, I can't. You can't say that. So some some people can, I guess, but I can't. That's so, right. but and, and I'm not taking anything away from Nick Saban in Alabama. I, I I thought they were a great team, and I thought LSU and Alabama were the two best teams in the country. And most certainly coming back this year, I think Alabama. You know, they've lost. I think they lost eight or nine players to the NFL draft. So they're going to, you know, they're going to have some growing pains, but down in Alabama, they, they plug in place. I mean, the last, uh, you know, they lost their, their Heisman Trophy candidate. Did he win the Heisman Trophy, Trent Richardson? Yes. So, yeah. So in the before that was Mark Ingram. Two so years who, ago. Two years ago. So who's who's next? That's right. You know, for Alabama. And, and these seven or eight guys that went to the NFL and that are about to be replaced, well, well, how many of them? How, how do you know the replacements aren't going to be any better than they are? I mean, these guys. This is their chance to shine. So, uh, you know, Alabama is 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 definitely going to be a formidable team. So sure. And uh, Bam, like I said, Bama's on top until somebody takes it away from them. Um, with that said, the number three team on this poll is LSU. Um, this week, actually, Tyron Matthew. Uh, wow. He got arrested, kicked off the team. Well, he didn't get arrested, but he got kicked off the team for filling a drug test. For the and second time. Second time, that's so, right. Because last year I think he was suspended for uh, synthetic marijuana use or something. So, And I think he, he served a couple games so, suspension. But hold on, synthetic marijuana. So, I mean, isn't regular marijuana from the earth? 
So wouldn't that, I mean, synthetic <laughs> yeah. marijuana. Synthetic, I mean, yeah, well, I guess synthetic. I mean, yeah, so what basically dudes, and, I mean, I, can't, I, don't, I don't mean to oh be my. ugly, but, I mean, can I call him an idiot, Randy? You, you just did. Okay, I just, just did. did. So, so, I mean, you got the world by the world by the the kahunas sure. and uh he and why he did not go to the nfl last year i will never know and this is a reason why you do not come back for your senior season because this he wasn't guy, a senior it doesn't matter he was <laughs> eligible to be drafted this kid lost out on millions randy he can't even play for mcneese state he's in drug rehab right now so think about the millions he should be in nfl training camp right now he was nfl ready he would have been he would have been honest to god a top five player taken if he would have went into the draft he would have been one of the top five players taken and now he 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 might not ever play football again at a at a professional or a college level. I agree. So, I mean, man, that's why he came back. He had the good life at LSU. Why would he leave? I mean, really? Yeah. I you mean, take these kids from nothing and you put them in something where they're they're big fish in a small pond, and why would they want to leave? You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I Moral see, of the story: Don't do drugs, man. I mean, I, well, I mean, be smart. That's been preached to us since the beginning since we were kids, and it's amazing. Some kids just still want to do it, and it just it leads to just Total failure. That's right. So, uh, well, let, let's not talk about him. He's on. He's not even on the yeah, team anymore. That's right. I mean, we're wasting so time we're talking about him. this guy. But back Proof. to LSU. You know, they're returning. I think eighteen or nineteen out of twenty-two starters, and they're upgrading at quarterback. Oh, I mean, man, big time. Uh, this kid Mettenberg, Mettenberger came out of. He got cut by the University of Georgia. He was going to compete with Aaron Murray for the number one slot. And early on, he was the number one guy with er Aaron Murray being the number two guy. Aaron Murray's got a chance of being a Heisman finalist this year. That's right. And the last uh, Georgia quarterback is only throwing 5,000 yards in the NFL. So, Matt yeah. Stafford and, and, and Aaron Murray, they're saying, is that good. But uh, And Aaron Murray's got, you know, he, he's – He's got the talent, so but definitely. But Mettenberger was supposedly a little better than Murray. Uh, Mettenberger was a little better than Murray. Well, Mettenberger's more of a, a Tim Tebow type quarterback. He's a little bigger and more mobile, I guess. And Murray's more of a pocket passer. Mettenberger can and can roll out and he can make some plays with his legs. And when plays break down, and and he's you know a little more physical. So certainly. But the point is, is LSU is in my opinion upgrading at the quarterback position. Jordan Jefferson. I just I don't know how many times I've watched this kid. I mean, he made some spectacular plays. Don't get me wrong through his career, but he's also made some pretty big boneheaded plays. And LSU, in my opinion, has really been lacking a quarterback, a true quarterback. And I think that's what they're going to get with Mettenberger. So with LSU returning 18 out of 22 starters, well, 17 now that Tyrone Matthews not on the team. That's right. But man, I tell you what, down there in LSU, man, they're they're just as good as Alabama at plug and place. And so who who's going to take his next man up? Well, yeah, know? the common theme in in this top 10 that we're going to go through is. Recruiting, 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 and, and it speaks for itself in this AP poll. Now it's not; it's probably not going to shake out this way at the end, but it never does. I mean, what's the what's the use of an AP poll? Is it really? Does it matter? It must. We're talking about it, man. But. You know what? I honestly think they shouldn't come out with rankings until until like week five of the season. Just let them play football, then rank them. Because there's so many teams that are way overranked, and there's so many teams that are underranked. And so let's say a team like uh, let's say like Louisville. Well, they're, they're starting off ranked 25th in the nation. I'm not saying they're a top 10 team, but maybe they're not 25th either. Sure. But for them to climb all the way up from the 25th position is so far to go. Why not? Why not watch them play three or four games, then rank them? You That's know. Right. So that's right. You take a team like um, like Michigan's playing Alabama week one. Boom, they they fall out. They get beat by Alabama. Well, I mean that's I mean to get beat by Alabama is something. I mean you've got beat by somebody. That's right. And I mean that could ruin them. But we'll touch on that later on. Yeah. So. But see, if you start off in the top ten, like let's say Michigan does lose to Alabama, that's not so bad for them. But if a team like Louisville loses to Alabama the first week of the season, well, they're done. They're done. They <laughs> can go right. undefeated the rest of the year, and they'll be lucky to make it to 18th. You know. Right. And although they might might give all the teams in the top ten a run for their money. That's right. You know. So. So the, the AP the AP poll is really, in my opinion, just something f uh, to keep people talking and excited. And that's the great thing about college football is is the cooler beauty. talk. It's the beauty of football is there's a never ending debate. Right. And and there's just a never ending debate in, in college football. You can just go on and on and on about all kinds of points. So. That's right. 
Uh, but back to LSU, M- M- Mettenberger, you know, is giving these guys a chance to really upgrade. And LSU is going to be a, a really tough team. But navigating the SEC, you know, they have to play Alabama. They have to play uh, Arkansas. I don't know who they have out of the East, but the SEC is just such a – it's so hard to go undefeated through the SEC. And, uh, but I mean, they it's hard in you. any conference, especially the SEC. Yeah. So, um, And that's one of the reasons probably why the last six national champions have been SEC. I mean, if you go right. undefeated, I mean, in the SEC, well, I mean, yeah. it, it just is what it is. The stats don't lie. That's right. That's right. So, number four, AP poll, Oklahoma, the Sooners, Boomer Sooners. Um, Bob Stoops, one of the best coaches out there, hard to deny that, um, has uh, – has Landry Jones coming back at quarterback? You, I mean, if it wasn't for Barkley, I think Matt Barkley at USC. I believe you're you're looking at Landry Jones as the uh, number one quarterback in the country. Absolutely. Um, unfortunately, it's going to be a duel. Um, they've got some shakeups on offense. Some who's he going to throw it to? Who's going to run it? But they always throw. They, I mean, they always find people to throw it to. People step they up walk at through, Oklahoma. They walk through games like crazy and. Excuse me. They walk through games like crazy and uh, just – it's the tough game that's going to matter. You know, they're going to have one or two games a year that they're going to have to man up and beat somebody. And how do they play in those games? Like when Oklahoma has to play Texas this year, you know, they're going to go through their schedule and they're going to look good. But when they play Texas or Oklahoma State or when they play that tough game, are they going to are they going to be able to, to, to push through and beat this team? That's right. So, and, and, and the, so the, it's just – you know, I guess that's why we're just all ready for football, man. We got all these questions that we're just we're ready to see. You when know? you take you take a program like Oklahoma, name another player off that team besides Landry Jones, can you? Most of America can't. I mean, that's true. I, and they I mean, win. It's, it's that time of, type of persona on that team every year. That's the the they put on hard hats and go to work. And and that's the beauty of Oklahoma and Bob Stoops. He gets the most out of what he has. Um, and and they're worthy of being the number four team in the country. And and they're going right. to be good. And they have a, a very good chance of of winning the Big Twelve and doing some good things out there um, in Oklahoma. So yeah, and the Big Twelve is going to be an interesting conference this year. I think Texas is poised to really, uh, you know, poised to take a, a, a step back. I mean, a couple years ago, I think three years ago, they won the national championship, and then the next year they only won five games and. Uh, Mac Brown come in and just fired all his assistants and offensive coordinators and just nobody Clean was. Slate. Yep, he yeah. did, and and they got they're really fired up down there in Texas. And I'll tell you one thing: they might they might not have the record, but I'll tell you what: Texas lines up and they play tough. And 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 in my opinion, at the end of the year, the team that wins the high school uh, the high school state championship or the national championship or even the Super Bowl is the team that just lines up and hits you in the mouth and beats you physically. And Texas is that kind of team That's where Oklahoma is – Oklahoma, they they're they're tough and and they like to toss the ball around the yard. But at the end of the day, you know it's the team that's just going to line up and hit you in the mouth. And and Texas is it, last year they really impressed me a lot with uh with just lining up and just trying to beat people off the ball. And so I, it's going to be interesting to watch Texas and uh, go through there. And that's going to be a big showdown. I can't wait oh, to watch yeah. the Texas Oklahoma game this year. That that's going to be a big big game. I, I hope I hope it's a, a good matchup as far as. Both teams are undefeated going into it. A lot of hype around the uh, Red River Shootout. Um, I think yeah, the last be. couple of years the Red River Shootout's been a dud to be honest with Kinda you. So, has. I, matter of fact, the last couple of years I've loaded up on Oklahoma and just you know uh, done well on Oklahoma because it just you could see it coming a mile away. You That's know, right. but I think this year is going to be a little different. I think Texas is 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 they're hungry and they want they want to knock somebody off. So. You know, where is Texas ranked anyway in the AP poll? Um, we got Texas at 15. 15, so yes. that ain't bad. No, so, not bad at all. No, they, um, they Very respectable. A... They could sit around at 15 all year long, creep up to 10, and then beat Oklahoma in the Red River shootout, and boom, they're in there. Oh, yeah. You know, granted, there's there's a lot of other teams in, in, in the uh, – in that conference that are that are good. Yeah, and you know, another thing interesting thing about that conference is is West Virginia moved Moves over to into this, it. Yeah. Moved into this conference and you know they got West Virginia at eleven in the A P. Yeah. Um, 
They got the their they got defense one of the best. is terrible. Their defense is a joke. It is awful. It's, it is worse than high school. It, it's defense. it's it's a Big East defense going to the Big Twelve, and to it's play. a terrible Big East defense on That's top right. of that. It's not a good one at that. But their offense is pretty. Man, solid. they can score some points. Man, Dana Holgerson knows a little bit about offense. He just signed a new contract. He's you know he and. So he don't have to look behind him to see what's going on anymore. He's, he's signed. He's Absolutely. got a contract. He can focus on West Virginia football. They can get into Big 12. They can really do some things out there. The, hey, Probably not this year, the, but they can do some Gino things. Geno Smith, I tell you what, I saw a stat somewhere, and I'm not sure about this, so don't hold me 100% accountable, but I saw a stat somewhere. I think it said that Geno Smith has went 180 pass attempts without an interception. Or something like that. That's an ungodly well, stat. To be it's going to be a rude awakening coming to the Big Twelve because he's going to get picked. Yeah, but you know what, man? The Big Twelve defenses aren't that great. No, they're not. I they're mean, really not. You think about it, even Oklahoma State. Even Oklahoma, you know, they, they have their oh, their defense. Well, I mean, they give up 30, 40 points a game regularly in these some of these shootouts. And sure. And with these new spread offenses, man, West Virginia, they're they're gonna they have a chance to upset a team because any time a team can score that many points, then they have a chance to win. So it just comes down to who's got the ball last. Yeah. You know, so I won't be surprised if West Virginia messes around this year and they're gonna knock off a, a Texas or Oklahoma or Oklahoma State. Uh they're gonna they're gonna clip somebody. I don't know who it's gonna be, but they're gonna clip somebody. Or I, I think number eleven, they having them that high right now, is where they should be. They're gonna fall. They're not gonna stay there forever. Yeah. I mean, I, let's just be honest. Um, I also see fall. them losing three or four games yeah, this year. Too. Me, me so too. I, I don't it, see them going uh, running the tables or or only having one or two losses. I, I see them. I feel like this sounds at least a weird analogy, but I, I feel like they're more deserving of the eleven spot than USC is at the number one spot. So, yeah. um, but that's just me. Well, what's their um, schedule look like anyway? Who West Virginia? Yeah. Um, I don't have it. I know they open up against Marshall because that's what they do every year. They open up against Marshall. So, but they're they're going to be. They can compete. I mean, let's 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 give them that. They can compete. Yeah. Um. I don't. You know. Obviously, I don't think they're going to win the Big Twelve. They'll they'll get somebody though. They'll be that team who messes around and gets somebody. Well, their tough games are Texas, Texas Tech. They got KSU, Kansas, TCU, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, and KU. That's nothing to scoff at, right there. No, that's no, pretty that's solid. pretty tough. Yeah. So they most certainly could got. Three or four losses, looking at looking at them right in the face. Definitely, but it's really interesting though that West Virginia has moved on to the the Big Twelve and all the the well, conferences just realigning. I guess. Well, they. I mean, they got to be glad. I mean, who wants to? I mean, I don't want to play in the Big East. Yeah, I mean, the Big East basketball. is getting beat down. Or maybe lacrosse. I you don't, know, man. who else? Who went to the Big East? There was two teams that just went over to the Big East. Randy, it was uh, went because uh, West Virginia left and uh, South Florida. No, they're conference use. I can't remember. I was just reading an article today on ESPN about the Big East being down and, and how it was a, uh, it was an interview with Max Strong about how how the Big East can, can can reclaim a stake of college football. And Max Strong basically just said, uh, "We got to show up and beat somebody." He no, said, no "We, we got to get into a national game against the top ranked team and just beat somebody." And 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 and. You know, I think Louisville's the team to do that. I don't know. Have you watched Louisville play? I like them. I do, too. I, I like them. I think they're going to make a little noise. They're sitting at the 25 spot, by the way. Um, Louisville Cardinals, they got Charlie Strong, like you said, is just going to have to – he's going to have to go out there and beat somebody. And you can't put it no no better than that. It's blunt to the point, hey, for us to get, you know, a pat on the back and a, and an attaboy, we're going to have to go out there and beat somebody. Yeah. And that's and what they've got Charlie to do. Charlie Strong is just a, a great coach and uh, – uh, Man, he he's just one of these coaches that coaches his team to it's smash mouth football. He he's not worried about winning pretty. He's just worried about his eleven players beating your eleven players. And at the end of the game, usually when you when you win the battle over and over and over at play after play, you usually win the game. And uh I really think I think Louisville is, is going to be a team you know, that I would like to see their schedule, and uh, yeah. I think Louisville's going to surprise a few teams, and and uh, they get good quarterback play, and I wish I knew more about them, but uh, about well, the players they have. But I we'll, really think we'll hit them again back at twenty five. Let's get yeah. back to number five, okay. and that's going to be the Oregon Ducks. Uh, just like we talked about earlier, man, the AP poll. There's a lot of unknowns. This is a team who 
should i mean look again plug and play we're, we're going to plug in my kind of players the speed up in oregon is just phenomenal oh my god oh man. they swarm the football yeah, they, they run Kelly in open space job. He he's a, a great coach who does great things up there yeah um oregon i mean i think they're the only team in that conference that can really give usc all they and can you know handle. what i think oregon's defense is underrated like all you hear about is oregon's offense oregon's offense and you know their defense in the big games. They step up and play play big time football, and I'm I'm just as impressed with their defense in big games when it matters the most. They really seem to make plays and do their job, you know, and where you know or their offense is, you know, without, you know, with the mobile quarterback and Chip Kelly calling the plays. He is a great offensive coordinator and sure. just does does a great job of of. Keep, I mean, you're not going to blow the Oregon Ducks out. I mean, when USC plays them, it's going to be a ball game. And uh, neither one of these teams are going to blow each other out. And it's, it's going to be a football game. As a matter of fact, they're probably going to play twice, to be honest with you. They will. So they're they probably will. going to meet up and then uh, in the regular season, and then they're probably going to play each other again for the conference championship. So uh, It should be exciting football, to say the least. One of the most explosive and dynamic teams in USC against – you know, an unknown right now, but I think by the end of the year, it'll it'll be for a great matchup. Yeah, and, and they and replaced speak. their quarterback, I think. At, quarterback, uh, running back. Um, the receiving core is still pretty good. Um, he's got the, he's got a bunch of Snoop Dogg's uh, guys out of uh, Oakland up there that uh, that, <laughs> that's funny that, that have been recruited to to Oregon, and plus they got that Nike money pour, pouring in up there. In, oh my uh, God! In Nike country, so uh, one of their biggest supporters. Nike and, don't have any money, do they? Yeah, they're they're struggling right now. So <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. But uh, but they're they're rolling at the number five spot. I, I'm not. I feel like they'll be there at the end of the, this year, but they. I don't know, man. They they it's a tough conference out there, and and you know it, it's getting tougher by the year. Because they lost key players, which is going to drop them back to the level of Stanford, who's going to be pretty good again this year, sneaky good. But yeah, well, but we'll Stanford, see it. You know, year. I think Stanford is about to go back to where they were. You got to remember, they lost, they lost Andrew Luck. I mean, this kid's about to to show up in the NFL and play. They lost their their head coach Jim Harbaugh, who in his first year took a team to the NFC Championship. A lot of these guys have left, and I know they got a good coach down there and whatnot. But Stanford is not USC, and they're not Alabama. That's they right. don't plug in place, and you know I I just think Stanford is is about to just fall back into the mediocrity with they're UCLA the and UCLA. California yeah. of the Pac-10, and I and I hope that's not the case because I like the program there and everything, but they're they're you know they've lost a lot of very very dynamic. Pieces. I mean, you know what I think of Jim Harbaugh. I think he's just, uh, just an unbelievable coach, and uh, and obviously Andrew Luck. I mean, this kid is. Well, we're all about to see what this kid's capable. That's of doing, right. So. That's right. His first preseason game. If that's any indicator of what he's going to do, it's going to he's going to be phenomenal in the NFL. And I wasn't sold on him, but um, after the preseason game, man, you've got to. I mean, it's a it's a watered down defense he was playing against, but you know. Minnesota hadn't even scored an offensive touchdown, I don't think, in the preseason yet, and they're in week two. Um, so, so we'll see. But, uh, well, again, unknowns. That's that's what this poll is all about, the unknowns. And at the end of the year, we'll sit here and talk about, hey, man, look, remember that first podcast we spit out there? We were predicting this, this, and oh, this. Oh, yeah, that would be funny to go back and listen that's right. to this. Uh, we'll have crow just... on our face. and Oh, wait, mud on our crow on our – you know what? We'll be eating crow and having mud on our face, whatever. So, anyways, on to number six. Oh, boy, here we go. The University of Georgia. <laughs> um, man, what can I say? Number six, I, I like the Bulldogs. I, I like Mark Rick. I think he's a great guy. Um, Aaron Murray, I think, should have been starting his freshman year. He didn't, but that's okay. He, I feel like he should have been starting. Um, phenomenal quarterback. He, he still has a little work to do. Um, Isaiah Crowell, the running back, gone. Uh, another idiot that's out there trying to do idiot things. That's what idiots do, idiot things. So um, he, he's got – He's got a stable of running backs. Some freshmen will be starting at, at the University of Georgia and this year. Everybody's all pumped up on Georgia's defense. And, you know, we live down here in Georgia country, and uh, every year a favorite a favorite saying. Hold on. Does our accent give away that we're from Georgia? 
Probably, probably. Okay, we okay. probably we probably sound like a bunch of rednecks. So, but yeah, we are we're redneck football fans. So, but my point, my, my thing with Georgia is, is every year a Georgia's fan. This is a Georgia fan's favorite saying every year. Man, wait till next year. Next year's going to be our year. And I've been a Georgia fan, and I quit drinking the Kool Aid about three or four years ago because next year's never came. And uh, it's just until Georgia shows up and does something, I just. I, you know whether they're worthy of the sixth ranking or not. I know everybody's pumped up on their defense and everybody's pumped up on Aaron Murray and and I've just been let down by the Georgia Bulldogs so much in my life that I just I can't get up and root for them or cheer for them anymore. Well, so, they they come in. Uh, they don't play. They don't play Alabama. They don't play LSU. They don't play Arkansas this year. That's right. They got an easy they, schedule. They, they don't. They've got a schedule to make a run, not only to the SEC championship but to a national title. But you know, we can sit here and talk about all we want. They've got to get up there and suit it up, put some put some toe on leather, win some football games, and people like us will be quiet. Um, we are uh, we are by far um, sticklers of the University of Georgia. Um, we're we're going to be we're going to be very 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 strict and hard on them because well I'm just going to put it out there Andy I think Coach Rick is the most overrated coach in all of college football history so he was brought to University of Georgia and uh, from Florida State and he's been there for 10 years almost now I guess 10 years we've got one SEC title maybe two we we Every, for six straight years we've the SEC's won a national championship Georgia has <laughs> not even got a sniff of it and hold on now we played in the BCS game against Hawaii yeah, uh, three years ago, against Hawaii, we didn't pick who we played. Man, yeah, but we haven't. We, I'm gonna I'm just let me give you this stat: out of the top ten highest paid coaches in college football, nine out of ten of them have won a national championship. Do you want to guess the one that hasn't? <laughs> Do you want to guess the one that hasn't? Wait till this year. Oh, here we go. Wait till this year. Okay. Just like what? a Georgia fan. See, what? Randy's still drinking the Georgia Kool-Aid, but I'm off the Georgia Kool-Aid for now. So Let me tell you something about Georgia. University of Georgia is in my heart, but I would not put a dime on them. I would never bet them on the Hoover. I would never pick them in a parlay. I would never play them any kind of way. I would never, ever because the inconsistency you know just they can't i just man i get so disappointed and want so much for them and, and they have and here's another thing too in the last 10 years georgia has put more players in the nfl than any other team in college football i mean we had three top five players on our team at, or on, our, on the team at one, one time. time and what did that get us it couldn't I, beat a mediocre georgia tech team oh my goodness man well <laughs> that comes back to the character of some of the players that were on the team but That's we won't That's even true. go there. So, anyways, but, our point our point on the number six is Georgia might be a little too high. I think Georgia will do some. <laughs> Remember good a couple things. years ago when Georgia came out ranked number one? I think they had us ranked number one or two, and yeah. I mean we we just bombed it, dude. Just yeah. awful. So we bought into it and and just didn't no, perform. y'all bought into it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did. Anyways, Georgia number six probably a little too high. We'll we'll work through it and see where we stack up at the end of the year. So number seven. Man, what a team. Florida State, uh, the Seminoles, a.k.a. Criminals by some. <laughs> Free Shoes University. Hey, man, they haven't had no arrest down there in a while, man. They, well, they just had a kid named uh, Greg Reed get kicked off of the team for possession of marijuana. Um, probably the best thing that could ever happen to Jimbo Fisher and probably to um, – to, to Greg Reed, actually. Um, he actually enrolled in Valdosta State. You are uh, kidding me. He was a Division three powerhouse. Um, yeah. He'll go down there, and he'll probably play offense, defense, return punts. He might punt. Oh, he my might God. kick. I mean, who knows? we got to go kid, down there and see that guy. This kid can do it all, and he's a phenomenal player. But his only problem is he was driving down the road and had a problem with his, his car. He had a loose nut behind the wheel. I'm going to let that sit in for a minute. <laughs> loose nut behind the wheel. So he gets pulled over a possession of marijuana. Just idiots do idiot things. Yeah. And here's a, here's another guy that should have went to the NFL last year, man. That's a reason why when it is time to spread your wings and go, this kid should be in NFL training camp right now getting a check in the mail for at Sorry. least 100000 a week. And instead, he's at Valdosta State. So let me ask yeah. you something. How'd that work out for you, big guy? So uh, Let's do um, – let's, let's do a um, – what do they call it? Ninety degrees of separation. 
Valdosta State is also <laughs> where Zach Mettenberger was at when he was with the University of Georgia. And he was down there in Remerton, Georgia, partying it down. Oh, here we go. Gets arrested and gets kicked off the uh, University of Georgia team and then ends up transferring to LSU. Greg Reed, who is from Lowndes County, Valdosta, Valdosta, where Valdosta State is at, goes to Florida State, gets kicked off the team. So Valdosta might stay away from Valdosta kids if you're out there trying to party it up and have a good time because nothing good. You'll be back home living with mom and dad before you know it. So stay away from Valdosta. It's, it's not good. That's Wintersville, by the way. Winning this high school program in the country yeah. comes out of uh, Valdosta, Georgia. Oh, absolutely. Um, if- Google them if you don't know them. A lot of people out there do know who they are and, and – I've been all over the country, and people ask me where I'm from, and I tell them in South Georgia, and they're like, Valdosta, Is that yeah. near Valdosta? They call it Valdosta uh, in a lot of places. So it's kind of odd that people know who they are and whatnot. So oh, um, yeah. that's great. But Florida State, let's talk about their football team, man. Greg Reed's out at cornerback. Um, he was pretty solid. Another recruiting monster down there at Florida State, man. Jimbo Fisher brings them in. Um, they're another team. They're kind of like Georgia, man. They've had a couple years to do a little something and not really. Yeah, Jimbo but, Fisher to me is like Mark Rick. I mean, do something, man. You know, right. I mean, just uh, you know, they got the talent and everybody, you know, is waiting for Florida State to 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 step back onto the national stage and every chance they get, they just don't do it. And and everybody's all hyped up and pumped up on Florida State this year. And, you know, I watched a lot of Florida State games last year, and they just had a real, real hard time lining up and running the football. And and, 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 and you know how I feel about just lining up and beating somebody. And, I, you know, until Florida State can line up and run that ball right at somebody, then, you know, I can't, I can't just say, oh, Florida State. And, you know, they just – they got some issues down there. You know, I'm not saying they're not a good team, but they're going to have to line up and beat somebody. So, uh, we'll see. They got Clemson early in the season. I think their third or fourth game is against Clemson. Yep. That's going to be a ball game. So, with Sammy Watkins and uh, Taj Boyd and uh, some of the other talent they have there in Clemson, oh, my God, that is going to be a heck of a football game, to be honest with you. One of the best games of the year early on in the season. It's got national championship implications, ACC uh, title on the line and uh, it, man it's going to be a heck of a hold moment. on now the fourth week of the season and the ACC title is already on the line is that what you think well that's how it goes in college football lose, but if you lose early at least you have a chance so. yeah you can't climb back LSU did it a few years ago in the SEC, uh, for the national title they lost early and came back and slipped in there so um, yeah. Florida State they've they've got some injuries they've got some stuff going on um, obviously with Greg Reed Um Jimbo Fisher nipped it in the bud, though. I think he did the right thing. And um, we're going to talk about the state of college football um, a little later on. Randy, who, who do you think, uh, back to Florida State, who do you think is the better quarterback down there, uh, Clint Trickett or E.J. Manuel? Well, I like them both, man. When Trickett came in against Oklahoma last year, that kid, I don't know if it was adrenaline, but I – I've saw arm strength that I haven't seen down there in a while. Maybe. He looks like a quarterback. Yeah, he does. He I mean, really he, does. he's got a he he looks like a quarterback. Now, on EJ the Emanuel is going to keep a play alive with his legs, and yeah. he's going to do some other things. I think I think he could get away with a two quarterback system down there, and he might I, have to. But, I, but is Jimbo Fisher one of these people that have so much pride? He's like, no, I'm sticking with my one quarterback, and that's it. I'm not well, putting both my quarterbacks ask, in there. Ask Les Miles about his national championship game last year. <laughs> And how much pride he had keeping uh, Jefferson out there on the yeah, field. Yeah, he, he should have made it. He should have. Man, they could have got anybody in there. They could have I mean, bought. Lee, what, what was his name? Uh, Jarrett. Jarrett Lee. Jarrett Lee. Was it Jarrett Lee? I think, I think his, his name. name was, yes. He was the back, or he was the starter then backup when Jefferson came back. Yeah. He's the backup to uh, Aaron Rodgers right now in Green Bay. Really? Yeah. Didn't know that. Yeah, he played the other night. Really? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Did he do well? well? Hold on. Was that San Diego he played with? No, I think it was Green Bay. He he backed up uh, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, we got to get us a computer so we can look all this stuff up as we're talking to. <laughs> or just be a little better prepared, maybe just. Kind yeah, of. well, that's not our but, strong. But we're I not just, prepared, so we do know a lot about football, but being prepared is probably not our strong suit. Yeah, so, so call us up and let us know if we got that one wrong. <laughs> Hit our Facebook account, tweet yeah. us. Just be nice, though. I mean, we, I mean, we right, don't man. don't get too carried away with 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 the slander here. We're nice to you. You be nice to us. That's how it works, America. That's how it works. That's so, funny, man. Um, but Florida State could do some things this year if they stay healthy. But any team out here, I mean, if everybody's got to stay healthy in order to make that's an true. impact, so that's true. Um, that goes without saying. So let's move along to number eight, the Michigan Wolverines. Um, the Michigan Wolverines, 
hold a place in probably both of our hearts. Yeah, um, I, I've been a diehard Michigan fan my whole life. So <coughs> all the way back to the Bo Schembechler days, uh, I've watched I've watched the the Maize and Blue just as much as any team. And I know the some of you viewers might find that odd being in South Georgia, being a Michigan fan, but. Uh, we have roots to Michigan. We have family and friends that still live there. And so we both kind of grew up watching Michigan and Georgia football. It's hard for us not to root for them, not to be on their side. That's right. But at the same time, if they won't win a game and cover the spread, then we ain't going to mess with them. But we'll still root for them. <laughs> we, we, loved, That's right. we loved them last year when they beat Notre Dame. That was a, probably one of the best games of the year last oh, year. Oh, man. Phenomenal. So, Had a great time. Boy, um, and, you know, Brady Hoke has done a fine job, and he seems like that. He seems like they finally found their coach. I mean, I don't think they gave Rich Rodriguez enough time. You know, they were really impatient. But You know where Rich Rod's at now, right? Where? Arizona. Arizona, really? Yes. Well, I knew he'd get a job sooner or later. So, I mean, he's, so in two years in Arizona, watch out. Maybe, that's right. Maybe three, but two. That He'll, guy is, is a great college football. And, you know, in hindsight, he should have stayed at West Virginia, you know. Yeah, he uh, would have. You know, but you know it all. It, it just all happens for a reason, and 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 good for Arizona. So he, That's I right. think he's a great coach, and I don't think Michigan gave him the benefit of the doubt. They should have gave him another year or two. But in today's world, win now, and the millions of dollars that are on the line, uh, you know, people want to have instant results. So I, I just sometimes it don't I just don't happen say this, that way. Rich Rod. At least the weather is way better in Arizona than it is in Michigan, oh, buddy, and yeah. West Virginia. <laughs> That's for sure. So, but um, Michigan, <clears throat> back to Michigan. They're they're going to be solid. They're, I think their toughest opponent. They got two tough games. I feel like this year, Alabama. Obviously, we yeah. One. Their That's first game be... of the year is against Alabama in Arlington. Uh, I got a really awesome write up. You guys got to check out on the website ranjacksports.com. Uh, I'll have it posted in a few days. But a, a really great write up about the Michigan Alabama game. Uh, like Randy was saying, that that's just that, that that's a big game. In my opinion, that's a big measuring tool for the University of Michigan. You know, they're trying to get back to this national stage. They're trying to say, you know, we are here. We're ready to compete for a national championship. You know, they didn't bring Brady Hoke there to go uh, to 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 just go to some bowl game. They 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 have grand illusions of winning a national championship sooner or later, and. Uh, and this game against Alabama is a huge opportunity uh, for them to to say we're back, you I'm know. Sure. And uh, you know, I don't know if I don't know how that game's going to play out, man. It could play out several different ways, but uh, but I'll tell you one thing that you will know for sure is at the end of that game, Michigan will know all they need to know if they're ready to step onto the national stage or not. Definitely. So, uh, quarterback play is going to be the biggest, you know, uh, shoelaces. Uh, Denard Robinson is going to be – he's going to be pivotal. Pivotal not only throughout the year, but this game especially, man, because their, their schedule is, is not easy by any stretch. But he can he can make a statement in this game and not he, – he can be good, not shine, but have a few games after this mm -hmm. to build up to the, to the last game of the year, which will be – Ohio State. Uh, Randy, he can stake his claim to the Heisman Trophy in this game, too. In this one I mean, game. He can come out right in this game and throw for a couple hundred yards and run for two touchdowns and have a hundred yards rushing and score the game-winning touchdown with three seconds left in the game against Alabama. And people are going to talk about him all year. He is – but – and then again, that Alabama defense might have him running around the field throwing pick sixes and looking like a fool. And and he might just completely and utterly disappear from the Heisman Trophy race right off the bat. So this game has lots of implications for, for – Michigan's going to have to have some special teams. They're going to have somebody return a punt, a kickoff. Somebody's going to have to do something amazing out there to be, beat Alabama. But they can yeah. do it. I mean, there's no doubt about it. They're well, talented. you know, and don't forget Alabama has coming off a national championship. And, you know, they're – might have a little hangover. They might have a little hangover. I mean, it That's happens right. in every sport, and and I just have a funny feeling that Alabama's uh, practices this summer and uh, leading up to this game, they're not as intense and as focused as they were last year. Where Michigan last year, Michigan's practices, they've had this game circled on their calendar for a while, and they this they know this is their chance. Yeah. So, uh, it, but then again, Alabama's so talented and has so much NFL talent. But you know. You'll have to read the article. I talk about Alabama's offense being, you know, Alabama's offense is not great. It can be stalled by a good defense. And Michigan, that's one thing Michigan done last year is they went, uh, their defense improved just an unbelievable amount in one year's time. And Brady Hoke is a really good defensive-minded guy. And, and, and to make a long story short, 
AJ McCarron is a great quarterback. He's a, but he, he's a he's a game manager, but he's not a great quarterback. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So a good the defense offense he ends, it dictates how well he's going to uh, be as a performer. That game can turn into a, a, a bit of a, a chess game, and a, a and, and a lot of people are probably calling from Alabama to blow Michigan out, and that very well could happen. But it could also really turn into a a real good defensive battle punt. A, a, a big game in a punt return, flip that field, and then you know, and, and pin your opponent back. It, it's going to be interesting. I think that's going to be a big game uh, for for Michigan. I think it's most certainly a bigger game for Michigan than it is Alabama. Without I, I do a doubt, too. And, and I think that's how Alabama may portray that game. Um, if they, especially if they lose. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, I can see that. But <clears throat> and and also the thing is, Randy, is Michigan could possibly lose this game. But still playing the national championship. Oh yeah, no doubt. You know, if let's say they play Alabama really close, and then they walk through the Big Ten, and then win the Big Ten championship. Well, you know, they'll have one loss, but so will three or four other teams. So the you know, the chances of a team, two teams going undefeated, are pretty slim. So you know, they that, could lose this first game against Alabama, and at least their loss is against the number three team in the nation. You know, that's, so that's what I'd like to see played out. And, and the reason I would is I know the bowl structure and everything is is changing as we speak, but with Michigan. Losing the first game and coming back and win. Let me take that back. Let me let me back up. I want Michigan to shock the world. Okay? I do too, That's what man. I want. I, I, I want you Michigan. You know how to shock I feel about Nick Saban. So That's right. I would I love Michigan for them to, to give the Nick Saban a big old crap burger served on a big silver platter. So well, I'm not going to speak ill of the man. He may want to come on the show one day. Well, and I he's hope lying, he, coach. Don't I, listen to him. I, you know, I, I'm sorry, but yeah, uh, I, but, I really would like to see Michigan. I mean, I would. I'd like to see Michigan shock the world because I don't think anybody. Anywhere is going to take Michigan in this game. Well, and you know what? Karma is a what? funny thing. It wasn't too long ago App State was beating them. I will never forget, what is it, five, six, seven years ago now? The first weekend of the year, you're all happy to watch football and, and, and you keep cutting over oh, the Michigan game and, and then you're, you're sitting there, it's like, App State's beating Michigan. What's wrong with this? You know, and oh, it'll, it'll, oh, they'll go to halftime and they'll come out and win 44 to 10. And it didn't happen that way, you know. And That's right. every year since that loss, Randy, a Division two school has went to a Division One school and whooped them. That's right. They beat them every year since then, and, and up to that point, a lot of times Division Two schools gave Division One schools a run for their money, but no one's ever broke the barrier and beat them. Well, let me and tell you why. You State, know why that's happening? Because you got kids like Tyron Matthew and Greg Reed doing stupid things, and they having to drop down to just Division Two. Well, Division and that's three. another thing nobody. These, these kids are coming out and playing. I mean, they're still ball players. They're still athlete, well, and, athletes. And, and athletic. App State wasn't no pushover. You got to remember, App State won the national championship. Uh, App State won the national championship um, the year before, and so they're four months removed from their national championship, and they they have a chance to go to the big house and play. And they have three players on that team that are in the NFL right now. Oh sure. So they weren't a pushover. You know, it wasn't like they were some pushover ball club. And, and App State's got a great offense. Don't take anything away from them. Oh they yeah, solid. every year they're they're a division. Uh, they're a powerhouse in their division. But b- b- back to Michigan. You know, fast forward now to to 2012 against Alabama. Here's their chance on national TV to make amends for that and to turn all that around and to 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 put glory back into Michigan and man this is going to be a heck of a ball game this is Michigan the Michigan fans are fi- I'm fired up about this game so uh I can't wait to watch it man so I hope I hope it's as spectacular as as I think it's going to be yeah I uh, agree um you know I want, again I want Michigan to shock the world don't know that they will um moving on number 9 South Carolina Steve Spurrier, the old ball coach, what can he do? Can he can he got Lattimore coming back off an injury? Yeah, injuries are tough to bounce back. Yeah, from, especially man. an ACL injury. You know, yeah. it, and you just don't bounce back from that. You got to, you know, get your legs back behind you. And but you know, if they can hold on to the first three or four games and get him build up and strength. South Carolina can win the SEC East. In my opinion, the SEC East is wide open this year. You have three teams in the SEC East, or four teams that really have a chance to win it. You have Alabama, not Alabama, excuse me, they're in the West. Uh, You have Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, and let's not forget Tennessee. I think Tennessee's a dark horse. I really like what uh, Derek Dooley does down there in Tennessee. And you 
they have a chance. So they play tough football, and uh, South Carolina is going to be a, a good ball club, and they they have as good a chance as, as any in the SEC East. It's wide open. Yeah, South Carolina. They got some. Uh, I mean, they don't have any problems at quarterback this year. No, they, no, no. Stephen Garcia there to that's right to and, falter and idiots do idiot things, and Stephen Garcia yet another. And Another Spurrier's ball. high on this guy, so he yeah. really likes his quarterback. And, and he, uh, he does a solid job. They they do what they have to do. It's not Steve Spurrier of old. It's not fun and gun, and we're going to go out there and crush you. He doesn't have he doesn't have the recruiting status that everybody else in the country does. Well, that's right. I mean, have you been to Columbia, South Carolina? I, I, it's a phenomenal little town, but – it's kind of like Athens, but you know who wants to go to Athens? Who wants to go to when you got celebrities and sun out in California? You know when you've got the tradition of Notre Dame, you have all these other variables in other schools. Yeah, but, absolutely. But for what he has, the old ball coach gets. Hey, and their defense is. Uh, let me tell you something. The old ball coach is realizing his old age that defense wins. That's and, right. Uh, he is. Uh, South Carolina, they're a tough physical football team, and and they like to pound on you. So, and he's got a good running game, and uh, you know South Carolina. You know, we'll see what happens, man. They we'll have see. a chance that you know they have a chance to, to win the SEC East just as good as Georgia, Florida, or Tennessee does. I agree. Number yeah. ten, Arkansas. Wow, what can I say about Arkansas, man? They're going to bounce back. Petrino's not there. Congratulations, Arkansas. You don't have Bobby Petrino no more. <laughs> and I mean, I'm not being ugly, but this cat, he really. I mean, the character of this man, I mean, he left the Falcons high and dry. Just, I guess everybody was in the shower, and he packed up his bags and snuck out in the NFL, you know. Like, I'm getting out of here before everybody realizes I'm gone. And he, what he did was did the Falcons a favor. Now, in Arkansas, I agree. he's done the Razorbacks a favor, too, I believe. Now, take nothing away from the guy. He knows he's his a, offense. He and does, he and he's a good now. coach. But, man, he just – it, it, I guess it just comes to, down to selfishness. Hey, I'm so worried about me and what I need in life that I will do crazy things at the expense of others later on if I get caught. You know, well, the good news. And, come in, on, man. The good news in moral, Arkansas. Moral standards. Yeah. You know? The good news in Arkansas is is they really their quarterback's back. Their running back is coming back. Uh, their receivers are back. I mean, they're going to be good. Oh they're man, what's the running the back's name? Field. Niles. Niles, man, he's a stud. They're going to get the ball. They're going to move the ball on offense. They're going to do a lot of good things. The defense is always going to be shaky. There, going to be questionable. Um, their special teams is going to be better than average, and they've got they've got to play Alabama. They've got to play LSU. Outside of that, you know, you've got Mississippi State out there, man, who you just really don't know about. Uh, that's right. Well, let's say Arkansas loses to Alabama but beats LSU. But Alabama beats LSU, but LSU loses. They all could have one loss. So the, Arkansas could find themselves in the SEC West Championship. And, you know, let's face it, the last six years, the winner of the SECs went to the National Championship. I'm not sitting here saying Arkansas is going to the, the National Championship. I'm just saying that the winner of the SEC has Don't listen to Bill Clinton. They're not going now. Let's just be honest. Bill Clinton, they will not. <laughs> I know you're listening. They will not make it. But they will show you. I mean, they could go like ten and two this year. They could. They could go. They'll lose to. They'll lose to LSU and Alabama. But at the same time, they could go ten and one. But if they beat one of those teams, they Randy, beat one of them. If it, they beat one of them, there's a <clears> chance that they play for the national championship. A good chance. So, uh, a good chance. You, you'll see what this AP poll is made out of. Is what you'll do. Yeah. I mean, you're going to force the hand, like, hey, are we going to vote for these people? To you know, be for here the most what? part, the AP poll is it, it. It puts puts all the teams together. You know, I wouldn't say anybody that's not in the AP 25 doesn't need to be there. You know, they got it right, but maybe, maybe this, maybe Virginia Tech needs to be at, at, at or well, where was Virginia Tech? 15th, 16th? They're 16th. Maybe at 16th. Maybe they need to be eight. I don't know, but at least they're in the AP, and you can talk about them. You know, that's right. So they're there. And and it'll it'll take care of itself just as the season goes on too. That's right. So, so anyways, Arkansas has got a chance to be there at the end, um, despite Petrino. Um, Eleven, we've talked about West Virginia. So yeah, we've already we've you know, hit Gino on Geno Atkins. No, what's uh, what's the quarterback's name? Geno Smith. Smith. Geno yeah. Smith. They don't, quarterback. Be on the lookout for him. Heisman potential right there. Oh, yeah. They put him. up an ungodly amount of points, and uh, they are a fun, exciting football team to watch. So That's right. So keep your eye out for them. The so. West Virginia-Oklahoma <laughs> game and a West Virginia-Texas uh, game, and those are going to be some really fun games to watch, man. Number 12, Wisconsin. Or Wisconsin. Okay, or here we whatever go. Whatever you cheesehead say up there. I, Here's you know. another guy that should have went on to the NFL. Monty Ball? Monty Ball. I hope you luck, Monty Ball, and I hope you win the Heisman Trophy, and I hope 
Wisconsin wins the Big Ten and you play for a national championship. No, did you say Monty Ball or Monty Hall, the old host of the uh, – what game game show was it back in the day? I can't remember. The match game, no. Let's make a deal. Monty Hall. You know, you don't know who I'm talking no, about. No, I don't. You got me oh my completely. Gosh. Uh, America, you know who Monty Hall is. He is not the running back. It's Monty Ball, B-A-L-L. And he can tote the rock now. Oh, no he's, about a, he's a stud. He and, is and a he, mad, absolute and, stud. You know, everyone's talking about, oh, Matt Barkley's going to win the Heisman Trophy. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Monty Ball's going to run you over all year long and could easily come close to 2,000 yards rushing in that offense. They are going to lean on him heavily. And uh, uh, Wisconsin's going to be a good ball club. They're going to be know? solid. Uh, they, uh, they're replacing their quarterback. You know, Russell Wilson's at the Seahawks right now. and, and That's my guy. You know that, right? Check out the website. I man crush last year on Russell Wilson. He was the man last year. Don't give me that. He was Russell Wilson. You still the man. You're in my overrated, heart. Overrated. In my heart. Overrated. You're in my pork, fat infested heart. Russell Wilson. Overrated. So whatever. Anyways, look I can't out for wait Wisconsin. to see who his man crush is on this year. So but <laughs> we all have man crushes. So uh, but. our guys are our guys, man. That's how it is. So anyways number number 12 is wisconsin let's go to number 13 real quick michigan state they're another one of them teams hey michigan state Whew. has got an unbelievable amount of defensive talent and they play uh their first game of the year is against boise and boise's down didn't boise lose their coach no he's still there he's still there yes well but boise, that might be the difference in that ball game is that he's still the coach there yeah um, i think michigan state's just gonna Thump them. You think so? I think so. I, think I don't know, so. man. I think they're going to show. I, I I feel like they'll probably give them a half of football. I don't know if they'll go four quarters. I don't think. What they about can. their quarterback position? I mean, somebody. I mean, somebody's got to throw it. Somebody's. Got, they got somebody's going to chunk that rock now. I mean, who want to go defense, to Boise State on that defense, Randy? I mean, there's like five or six players that are NFL caliber players on this defense. I mean, name one kid outside of the quarterback. Who's the quarterback from Boise State last year? Uh, Lefty kid. See, I don't remember his name. Now, do you know another person off that team? Could you name me one other player? I couldn't. And they come out and whip everybody every year. They play and, on a blue field. They play on a blue field. <laughs> they're the blue field team. There you go. So, we've touched on them. So, Michigan State, look out. We don't know what they're going to get on offense. We know the defense is going to be good. Um, and we know their coach has hey, some their quarterback, Their running back is coming back also. Yeah. And he should have went to I, – I, I don't know. I, I wish I had my computer in front of me because I don't – I, I want to say that, that their, court, their running back is coming back also. And they have a really good stud running back. And, and they're, they got – Michigan State is a solid football team. So. Big Ten's going to be sneaky this year, man. There's going to be some teams in there you just – you're going to be like, wow, they're – Yeah. They've only got two losses or they've only got a loss or yeah. something like that. So, look out for Michigan State. Number 14, my sleeper team. Um – Potential man crush possibilities here. I'm just throwing it out there now. I'm not saying they are, but uh, Clemson, Clemson University, man, they've got O line coming back. I think everybody but their center, mm-hmm. Taj Boyd, uh, Sammy Chunkin Watkins, Sammy the most Watkins. exciting, electrifying player in the country. This kid, they they've got some, and their defense isn't great. They're bend but don't break. But they've got a couple of got cats that have been recruited. And you know the only thing that might come in and just make a, di- a total difference in that defense and start plowing some. I'm people. with you on Clemson. I really like Clemson, and I think they have a chance to to sneak in there and win the ACC. And you know they're a dark horse for the national championship. They with the talent they got and their coach uh, Debo. 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 Debo Sweeney. Debo Sweeney. Uh, <laughs> You know, he, he's a great coach. Oh, you don't have to fake a redneck redneck accent. You've already got it, by oh, the way. Oh, so when a, redne- you... when a redneck fakes a, a redneck accent, it's even worse it's than what even, you're saying? Yeah, it becomes hillbilly or something. I don't know. Yeah, but. it does get pretty bad. So, mm-hmm. uh, But Clemson, to me, every year, they have a chance – they're, they're, Clemson is the Georgia of the ACC. Every time they have a chance to win that big game and do their thing, they just drop – the ball, man. What in their bowl game last year? Didn't they lose? Didn't they give up seventy points to somebody? West Virginia. I mean, man. And what Gino about Smith and West what Virginia? What about you know? Hold on, hold on. Let me. I can pull this up real quick. Let me get. Let me get this phone out and click on this team, Clemson. One of their games last year, they were all excited and had a chance, and it was just a big game for them last year. And they just, golly, just. I don't know what it is about them, but they there just, was a couple of games last year that they kind of underperformed and whatnot. They did, and, and, and if you're I think gonna, it was Florida State was one, and um, Vatek, I believe was the other. 
Yeah, and the thing is, is if you're going to be consistent and win the national championship, look what LSU did last year. I mean, they beat six teams in the top ten and didn't lose. And so you just got to man up. Uh, let's see who they lost to last year. They were on fire. They won their first so many games. Then they played Georgia Tech. They go to Georgia Tech and get blown out 31-17. to Then they lose to NC State. NC State, Randy. I mean, what bowl did they go to last year? The toilet bowl? I don't I know. I mean – and then they lose to South. Then they play South Carolina. Uh, and they play South Carolina, lose to them. Then they beat Virginia Tech. Then they go to a bowl game and get. I mean, give up seventy points. I mean, what is up with that? Seventy points, man. So if Clemson wants to win the national championship, they've got to find a way to 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 just to con- not lose to Tech and not lose to NC State. I mean. <laughs> And I, I guess, Bottom line. That's right. So, and this they play Florida State their the third or fourth game of the year, and that's going to be a heck of a ball game. So, oh yeah, I can't wait to watch that one. Me so, too. Me too. That Florida State defense against that unbelievable offense of uh, of uh, the Tigers. The, and you know what, man, Sammy Watkins, you talking about kick returners? This kid is going to return a punt in that it game. It reminds me of um, Devin Hester. That's with the Bears now. That yeah. Used to be in Miami. He, that's what he reminds me of, just a, a total game Oh, changer. dude, he's lightning in a bottle, man. He this is. dude is, without a doubt, the most dynamic, exciting player in well, college football. Well, let's, so. let's keep rolling with number 15, Texas. We talked about him earlier. Yeah. They're going to be there. Longhorn fans are just – they're they're good fans. I mean, this, this team is so big they have their own network. I yeah. Mean, well, you know, they say everything be. in Texas is bigger. So I've got a couple friends down in Texas. Inclu- <laughs> everything in Texas is bigger, including your ego. So oh, that's a shout snap. out to all you Texas fans. But I'm giving you a hard time, guys. So I'm all over the Texas Longhorns this year. Texas at 15, 16. Vitek, we've touched on them earlier. Yeah, if what what Frank Beamer just doesn't get enough credit, does he? I mean, Frank no. Beamer just Frank here, Beamer was in anywhere but Vitek. You he would probably have several national titles year in year out man they just show up and they're always just man they're just a good team and what about his uh what about his defensive coordinator bud foster i think's his name mm-hmm. you know i mean this guy i wonder how many head coaching jobs he's offered and you know the cool thing about virginia tech is and frank beamer a lot of people don't know this if frank beamer gets a raise everybody gets a raise it just trickles down to everybody and he yeah. takes care of all his assistant coaches well, speaks and well players. Of his character man it's kind of person he is that's why kids want to play that's why kids want bobby to petrino if you're listening uh, <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> take a note from beamer Be- beamer, beamer so, ball. and you know last year the quarterback from virginia tech um what was his name he he tyrod taylor no 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 not tyrod taylor they got a guy oh God. the other kid after him yep they yeah. they expected him to be the Cam Newton, you know. Oh, Virginia Tech's got this kid. He's like Cam Newton. He's six <clears throat> foot five, two hundred and forty pounds. He can throw it and run it and and whatnot. And, and there was only one Cam Newton. You're not going to get another. Man, one. Cam Newton was an anomaly. Yeah. I mean, people. A what? An anomaly. Yes, us rednecks down here <laughs> have a vocabulary. Hey, so. <laughs> look, if you can't spell it, you can't use it on this radio show. Okay. Podcast, okay? I might not be able to spell it, but I know what it means. <laughs> okay. So, but no, he, you know, make a long story short, this kid wasn't Cam Newton and he did not live up to the expectations and he struggled at times last year. But make no doubt about it, this kid's got talent. And and Virginia Tech's going to be there. I think their first game of the year is against Georgia Tech, and that's going to be a heck of a ball game up in Atlanta. So I oh, think yeah. it's in Atlanta. It's, it's a Monday night game. It's a Labor Day. Absolutely, I think it's going to be a great game. So, and I'm excited and ready. Um, we uh, we got a few more to run down, and and uh, we'll get out of here in Nebraska. You know, is Martinez back? Martinez is back, and you got to love to hate the guy and hate to love him. You know, he is his throwing motion is it's awful but they run the ball so well and you know what their running back is back also uh i can't remember his name uh but man they they can pound on outside you. of martinez i couldn't tell you a single player from nebraska they, so. they, they i like their coach bo pelini is i a, like pelini bo pelini is a great coach So nebraska nebraska fans if you're out there call us up let us know a little more about your team where are you sitting at this year we'd like to know facebook us Tweet us at uh, Ranjack Sports. You know, I'm a little disappointed in Nebraska. Last year, I picked them to win the Big Ten. I really thought they were going to go to the Big Ten their first year and win the Big Ten championship. <clears throat> and they really kind of, you know, they, they played in a couple tough games, and they just, you know, for some reason, they just didn't tra- 
transfer the, the the intensity from Big Twelve play to Big Ten and and uh but you know what I think I think Nebraska has a chance to to really surprise some teams man they're they're Nebraska's not a pushover and they got a chance to win the Big Ten well nobody's talking about them and True. I'm gonna continue that I'm not gonna talk about them Sh- pr- sh- win Nebraska show me prove me wrong I hear you. and I'm and then we'll talk about you okay I hear you so that leads to number Who, eighteen who's 18? another Big Ten team. Ohio State University, who's on probation. He's got Urban Meyer as a coach, Braxton He's, Miller as a quarterback, oh probably one of the most underrated quarterbacks. I'll go in ahead the and tell you right now, more than likely, they're probably going to win the national championship the first year they get out of probation. <laughs> so, uh, Are they on two year or one year? I don't know. I think but, it's two. Man, Urban Meyer has a formula and he's got it figured out and he has got a quarterback. He's got a quarterback that can run his system. Oh already. my God. I mean, look what he did with Tim Tebow down in Florida. You know exactly. what I'm saying? And now he's got a, a quarterback. That's potentially just as good, if not better, potentially as Tim Tebow. And so, man, Ohio State might be one of the best teams in the Big Ten. And just Urban Meyer going there instantly makes them just instantly makes them awesome. That's so, right. uh, uh, but unfortunately, I don't think they can play for the Big Ten championship. They can't they go can. to a bowl game. They cannot. So, but you know, I hope they go undefeated. I'm just gonna put. I'm not a big being Ohio a Michigan State. fan. I hope you guys do go undefeated I'm and can't a, even play in the. <laughs> I'm not I'm a big. Kidding. I'm not a big Ohio State believer and fan. I just, I don't know, the Maurice Claret thing just kind of. I've wow, never really gotten that is. I've never gotten over it. I just. I yeah. liked them then. I thought they would do. Some oh things man, I tell and, you what, that was. I will never forget Maurice Claret's uh, uh, one and only year. Yeah. You know. Uh, you know, golly, it was it was the last game of the year. It was the Michigan, uh, it was the Michigan Ohio State game, last game of the year, and I think Ohio State was undefeated. This was the year Ohio State went on to play Miami, Miami. in the national championship the game, Bowl. and I was never a big Jim Trestle fan. And I tell you what, Jim Trestle is a fine coach, and I can't oh, wait sure. for him to get a, a job. But it it was like fourth down and three, Randy. And the ball was like on the 50-yard line. And I think Ohio State was down by a score late in the game. They were. And, and Jim Trestle, he play action fakes this ball to Maurice, Claret, uh, to Maurice Claret. And they throw a 50-yard bomb in the end zone. And if he drops this ball, game over. Ohio State doesn't go to the national championship. What a call by Jim. It was, I'll never forget it. It was one of the most spectacular calls I've ever seen in sports. And I was just blown away. And make a long story short, dude caught it, and they went on and played Miami in the national championship game. And that was the game I think McGahee blew, blew out, out his knee. knee. So, and that's what you don't get anymore in college football, man, because people are so worried about losing their jobs. Their job security, you know, it's too easy. What have you done for me lately? That whole mentality and attitude that you don't get that kind of play calling no more. Bobby Bowden, Mark Rick, when they were down in Florida State, man, they were aggressive. Steve Spurrier, aggressive. Um, you just had these guys. Now you have a you have a spread offense. Well, Randy, you do have coaches. Aggressive. You do have coaches like that, and they're the one. They're few and far between, but they're the ones that are winning the national championship and the high school. Les Miles, uh, Les D'Antonio Miles. in Michigan uh, State. He's he's another one. So yeah. But uh, anyways, look for Ohio State to do some things. They could go undefeated this year, and I'm not joking. They could go undefeated and have nothing to show for it except we went undefeated. They can just say "What if?" And yeah. unfortunately, when you get when you give away merchandise for tattoos or what? I mean, come on, man. Anyways, moving on. Oklahoma idiots State do idiot things. Man. Idiots do idiot things. Oklahoma State. I think that's going to be a reoccurring theme on the show, Randy. Well, idiots do idiot things. You know what? We probably need to get a, a thing back here, or, or uh, idiots do idiot things, or something. You know, some type of soundboard or something that's right. that when, when it when we bring that up because that's pretty funny. Oklahoma State, the Cowboys. They might go. They might fly under the radar. And yeah, be but they're a solid replacing team. man. They're replacing a two-time Belitnikoff Award winner, the only two-time Belitnikoff Award winner, Justin Blackman. Their their starting quarterback is the starting quarterback for the Cleveland Browns right now. There is no way they replace that kind of talent, Randy. There, it's not possible. So Oklahoma State's going to take a step back. I'm sorry. I'm a huge Oklahoma State fan, and I I would do anything to go to a game there at night. They get rowdy. I'll go so, if I get to whack one of them paddles against the board. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? Oh, God, yeah, absolutely. So it's like caveman style, just beating things boom. and stuff like that. They get fired get up down there. Get a cheerleader to head and 
drag her by the hair or something, caveman stuff. But I'm getting way off topic. Hold on, this is another. <laughs> this is a whole different podcast. I'm I was thinking into. about whacking one of them cheerleaders, man. Yeah, like, come right. here, darling. I'm kidding. So, uh, but Oklahoma State, man, they they really could fly under the radar. They still have their uh, running back Randall, who hey, was. That's right. And everything. don't forget, I'm a man. I'm 40. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's a great coach, man. And, I like and him. he might have a freshman Gundy. in there, Gundy. That's right. I love Gundy. He might have a he might have a freshman in there at quarterback and. Uh, you know what? But they're going to be competitive. I, I, when I when I say they're going to take a step back, I don't mean they're going to go uh, five and five. You know? No, 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 no. That's right. I mean, they, they might lose two. They might lose three. I, yeah, I, and I, I think they're going to be a good team, but they're not. I don't think they're going to compete for the Big Twelve, and cert, most certainly not a national championship. No, so. not, not yet. They're still about a year away from rebuilding. Who we got next, ones. man? TCU, the Horn Frogs. T- go Horn Frogs. I think that's their little deal or something like that. They got some kind of little hand gesture. I don't know what they're going to have this year. We you know, never do. Yeah, and every year, and and yeah, this is the first year that they're in a conference, Randy. They're in a real conference. This was the other team I was telling you about a while ago that joined the Big East or Big Twelve. So they are now in a conference. I'm almost certain. Click on them and see who they play. So I'm almost certain they joined the Big Twelve or the Big East. What's it say? <clears throat> I think it's the Mountain West. No, they're not in the Mountain West no longer. They, when West Virginia moved, they're in a conference now. And this is a big deal for what TCU to be in a conference because now they have the schedule. Every year, TCU is, in my opinion, one of the best teams. I mean, the defensive talent and the coach down there is just phenomenal. Let's not forget their quarterback is the the. the that from two years ago is they're is, in the Big Twelve. Yeah, yeah. So now they get a chance to play. <coughs> now, if they go undefeated in the Big Twelve, Randy, they can't be denied the national championship. Oh, not at all. Okay. And every year they go undefeated and have this great team. So, uh, but let's see what they got. Maybe, maybe they should. Maybe this would have been better if they joined the Big Twelve two years ago. Exactly. But, but th- here's their chance. You know, let's see what they got down they can there. Put on the, uh, their big boy pants and, and go play with the big boys, and, and this is their chance. And absolutely, they're either going to sink or they're going to swim so and i think they're going to you know i think they're going to be a good ball club i'm anxious to see i really don't know i haven't looked at them enough or studied them enough but this is their chance to to say hey you know we're tired of being overlooked and now that they they got they're in a conference playing tough opponents every week then let's see what they got number 21 stanford we've talked about them they lost harbaugh lost luck they're going to backslide um they that I don't. I agree. I don't think they're ever going to bounce back and be that team they were the past two to no, three years. No, absolutely so. not. But but they'll be solid. I mean, you can't have that that talent they had well, there just fall you, all the way you know, the map. They'll be a six and six team or a seven and five team or they could go like a, a eight and four. Eight and four. They could. I could see that. Yeah, so, they could. Just because the rest of the conference is down a little bit. Well, that's so. right. But uh, twenty two K State Kansas State University. Hey, D- Dan them. Snyder. Bill Snyder. Bill Snyder, the, sorry, thank one you. One of the best coaches in the country. One coach of the year last year. And this yeah. team, I'm telling you what, I won more money off K-State last year than any team in college football. But I don't think they're going to sneak up on anybody this year. They won't. That quarterback they have down there, uh, Klein, I can't remember his first name. I think it's Kellen Klein or something Klein. He's yeah. a gamer. Like, this kid shows up and puts it all on the field. And I'll tell you what, when you got a great coach like uh, Snyder and you have a, a quarterback that, that has a heart like that, Man, uh, they're going to beat some teams. So, and they're going to be competitive in a lot of games. So, yeah, I think they will. I look for K State to do some things. Um, we'll just keep an eye out on them. We'll be talking about them more. I feel good about it. So, absolutely. So, and you know, Randy, they could sneak around and win that Big Twelve. So, oh, yeah. they're they're talented enough and whatnot that that that, that they have a chance. That's so, right. I mean, I'm not saying it's a long shot, you know, to to, to win the Big Twelve, but. At least they have a chance. So, all right. Well, number twenty-three, one of my favorite teams. Hold on, let me rephrase that. I say favorite because I like them this year. I like where they're headed. And that's University of Florida. I'm gonna give everybody a second so they can gasp because, as being a, a Georgia fan, I'm not supposed to like the University of Florida, but I do. I like Will Muschamp. He's a Georgia guy. He played for the University of Georgia. He's got a team. Traitor. He's got his. <laughs> I'm kidding. He's got his team. <laughs> He's got his team, and he will. That's right. It took him a while to to get rid of the the Meyer. They're going. Yeah, they're the set. So. Yeah, that's right. They're going. They're going to make a little noise. They very well could win the SEC East. They very well it could. It could come down to the cocktail party in Jacksonville, Florida, which uh, 
Rain Jack Sports should be on hand for this oh, year. Oh, so. man, I'll tell you what, the Georgia-Florida game, but you know what? It'll be just like every other Georgia-Florida game we've watched for the last 25 years. I think well, Georgia – last year? I think Georgia has beat Florida – Four times in twenty something years. I, I'll have to, next time we have our show. I'll have that stat for you, but I'll but, guarantee you it's four to, only four times in twenty years we beat Florida. But wait till next year. Well, wait till next year. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Wait Look till for ne- Florida to do bigger things than expected. Okay. I think so too. And 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 you know what? We're not going to get to Tennessee because they're not in the top twenty five. But I just want to say that that last year, Derek Dooley just you know, he's one of those coaches that just. Man, he expects his players to beat you physically and line up and put a hat on a hat and lean on you all game long and just wear you down and wear you down. And uh, they play they play a tough physical style football. And I, I think Tennessee, man, as a dark horse, is to 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 I can't wait to watch the the well, SEC in o- East unfold. October they play Tennessee and Georgia in October, and October will define their season. Um, yeah. The only other yeah. threat that I think they have. In, in, after those two games is Vanderbilt Commodores. And don't sleep on Vandy. Them cats are for real, man. They, they yeah. can play some ball. Yeah. But they're getting better up That's there in right. Nashville. Well, they're, they're, you know, they're going to be competitive, and you know, they might – you know, they might upset a team. Yeah, I'm you not going to sit here and say they're going to win the East or anything no. crazy. But they're going to play football. They're capable of up, an upset. Yeah, they, they nearly beat Georgia last year. That's and, right. They're and very Georgia capable of an upset. They could and couldn't hardly handle it. So That's right. But uh, anyway, so that's kind of the wrap-up of the SEC. we got two more teams on this list. We've already gonna, talked about one of them. Yeah, and we talked about Boise State. Um, yeah, we've talked about both of them, we Boise, have, State and Boise State and Louisville. Boise State and Louisville. Um, I think these last three teams are actually last four teams – K State, Florida, Boise State, Louisville, all can jump. They can all move up in the rankings with some time. Of course, well, you can say that about any of these, I guess. And at the same time, you can have a lot falter and yeah. fall back. But these guys, um, these guys all have something to prove. College football is here. It's among us, and we can't wait. And we're ready. Oh man, what are you talking about, man? I am so ready for football season. It is like. My world is just on hold. Like nothing is right in the world until football season starts. That's right. And so. uh, it's going to be here in a couple weeks. <clears throat> and man, I am so ready for it, Randy. And uh, and just God, well, it's going to be here soon. Well, we're going to try to get out of here, guys. Our producers tried to just wrap it up like uh, an hour ago. It seems like, and he's he looks a little mad. His ears are red and his nose is bleeding. I don't know what that means, but we're going to try to wrap this thing up. And get out of here. Uh, we're going to try to do this every week. We're going to put it out there for you to see. And uh, please, we, we need your feedback and your response. Uh, yep. Go to go get on our website, www.ranjacksports.com. That's R-A-N-J-A-K, sports.com. And uh, click on our Twitter or Facebook. And- like us on Facebook. Uh, look us up, Ranjack Sports. And then our Twitter handle is at ranjack.com, ranjacksports.com. At Ranjack Sports. I'm sorry. I'm not. Oh my god. I'm not good at twittering and he's tweeting. He's fumbling it. He's fumbling my it. Face and all that. But we're getting good at it. That's so. right. We're gonna uh, by proxy. We're gonna learn how to use this technology. That's so. right. So I'm Randy Meadows. I'm Jackie Haswell. We're signing off. Big thanks to Anero Media for their help and everything. And uh, we'll look forward to talking to you guys soon. Thank you. Peace out.